and the time has come for another Ask Dr. Vaughn. So let me switch the camera around. I'll see you guys, see what you guys are asking here on Periscope with Ask Dr. Vaughn, which uh, has been getting a lot of attention along with a few other doctors who are on Periscope, specifically Dr. Neil Flock in Connecticut, the bariatric surgeon, and Dr. Ramin Bramba in Florida, who uh, is an, a urologist and just drove across the country with uh, dr um, Drive for Men's Health, uh, where they took a Tesla across the country to make people aware of men's health. Okay, we got a hi from Crickety, and we got uh, Jetty from Kentucky. Thank you for joining us. I'm guessing that's what the KY stood for. And thank you for the hearts, by the way. Uh, Arkara, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for all of you who follow. Thank you, uh, those of you who joined us for the followers only, <laughs> asked the doctor the other day. Uh, Tulsa. Hello, Tulsa. I haven't been there in quite some time. K Hog, thank you for joining us. Thank you, uh, Canada, for joining us. Greetings. And Danielle, uh, you must be referring to the followers only periscope that was awesome. Yes, it was. Ohana for Beta, thank you for joining us. This is a great group that we've got here right now. Um, we can go ahead and talk about stuff we've done here today. If, if any of you have watched the procedure, let's see, did we do procedures today? We did one procedure today. I'm trying to remember what it was. Have so much happened today, I can't remember. How do you recommend getting a mole off the face from home? Uh, we recommend getting moles checked because uh, not all moles are benign, so we, we do want to get them checked. Even if you did take it off and it wasn't um, benign, uh, even with removing it, you can still have cancer cells left, so we do recommend getting that checked. Chronic migraine headaches are an awful thing, so we can hear him. Who is it you want to hear? Holly Weiss, thank you for joining Holly. Oh, hi, Holly. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Big Red Z06, thanks for joining us. And somebody wrote about the chronic migraine. I'm a dentist getting... Oh, my goodness. Well, show your dentist what uh, Periscope is, and maybe they'll put you on once they get on. Someone asked why you're wearing a, a mic. Wearing get a mic. Hello, Dr. Von. Hey, Big Red. 1221 Dot, thanks for joining us. I recognize you. Uh, I'm wearing the mic because I, I tend to think the sound's just a, a, enough better that it's worth doing it, and it, you know it takes nothing to plug the mic into the into the phone. And I already had it; I was using it for other things. Uh, gag when brushing teeth in the mornings is that a dental issue? No, that would not be a dental issue. That'd be uh, an issue with the sensitivity of the gag reflex in the pharynx, more like a, a neurology or ENT issue. But it doesn't happen at night for uh, Matt Addy one. You'll say what? Joined? Thank you for joining us. Um, chronic migraine. What kind of doctor are you? Everybody in unison. Right. What kind of doctor am I? You guys know what answer I always put, and I want to see what you guys write. So we're going to have uh, Periscope participants write what kind of doctor. Okay, somebody guess internal medicine, Holly. I do a lot of internal medicine, but actually I'm not internal medicine. Somebody said family. Uh, somebody said ER. Somebody said family. Somebody said family and ER. That's Danielle. And then Kenny said, family, um, I was hoping you guys would have put the answer I always say first. What do I always say first when somebody says, what kind of doctor are you? What do I say? I say, I'm a blank doctor. Board certified ER with board certification ER. You guys are all putting things I do say. I, I do say all those things. But what's the first thing that comes out of my mouth when somebody says, what kind of doctor are you? Yes, <laughs> Matt. Matt Addy, one, got it. I always say, yes, Danielle. That's what I say first. Yes. Okay. But yes, that's all true. Uh, I have had a patient once say I was a good doctor. I once had somebody on Periscope say I was a good doctor. And uh, I am a family medicine doctor, although I'm not board certified or trained in family medicine. I'm board certified and trained in emergency medicine, practicing family medicine with my partner who is board certified and trained in uh, family medicine. So between the two of us, we get a lot of things covered, and it makes for a very broad experience for uh, patients to come to our practice quite often. In fact, I, th I think you've seen it on Periscope where both doctors, Vaughn, go into a patient room to examine them together. Got a mole check, and it's benign, but they want an arm and a leg to remove it. Oh, gee. Do they charge also for the removal of the arm and the leg? And he doesn't like Periscope. LL. Oh, you're talking about Dr. Gwaine there. Uh, or what was it we were calling him for a while? Uh, Dr. Brady? <laughs> the deflating Dr. Brady. Um, chronic migraine. Oh, TIAs. Intense pain, says in the sacrum. Is that even possible? Um, 
TIAs and chronic migraine are both neurologic problems. Uh, both of them oftentimes do get uh, a neurologist involved, so maybe we'll just kind of go down that road and talk about uh, TIAs and chronic migraine. TIAs, uh, TIA stands for transient ischemic attack. And a TIA is what happens if you have a stroke resolve within a certain amount of time. Now, Danielle loves quizzes, so I'm going to have a quiz here. What is the length of time that you have for a TIA to resolve for it to be called a TIA, TIA and not a stroke? What's the length of time? Anybody got a guess? You guys can write in your guesses. So anyways, while, they're write, while you guys are writing in your guesses, somebody says 24 hours, that's 1221 dot. Any other guesses? So while you guys are guessing, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it. 30 seconds. A TIA is a transient ischemic attack, meaning uh, transient meaning limited time. Ischemic referring to loss of blood to a part of the body, in this case part of the brain. Attack, well, it, it, that's the way to describe it. Multiple choice? Okay, you guys choose one of the answers that's already been given. We've had 30 seconds, 15 seconds. I think one was 12 hours, one was 24 hours. Somebody else was 12 hours. So those are your choices. We've got four choices out there. And the should I give the answer now? You guys are giving lots of hearts. I'll go ahead and give the answer. The answer is 15 seconds. No, it's not 15 seconds. The answer is 24 hours. If the symptoms are resolved within one day, it is, it is called a transient ischemic attack. If they last longer than a day, but they go away rather quickly, and I believe the limit is a, a few days, it may be a week, uh, there's a term that you don't see a whole lot, but it is a term that exists called RIND, R-I-N-D, kind of like the uh, outside of the watermelon, RIND. A RIND is a reversible ischemic neurologic deficit. Have you ever heard the term RIND? RIND. R-I-N-D? Do you know that? Uh, yes, I have. Can you say what RIND is? No. Is it a term in common use? No. Okay. Ryan, reversible ischemic neurological deficit. Or TIA. So, well... It's different than TIA. It, we had somebody who, had, who they used that term on. It's longer than a TIA. A TIA is 24-hour. Ryan, I think, can last up to a week, but I'm not sure. I'd have to check. I'm sure somebody can check uh, Wikipedia and tell. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Wikipedia. Dr. Dr. Wiki. Um, so... TIA being, uh, it's essentially the same thing as a stroke, but it goes away. And how tall is that doctor? <laughs> that must have been why he's showing you. <laughs> what are you, 6'2", 6'4"? I hit my head walking through the door. 6'4". 6'4". He's 6'4". He's not an orthopedist. And he's not an orthopedist. Knuckles do not drag on the ground. <laughs> Did I say that? Did I say that on the whole internet world? Wow. Oh, they love me. Orthopedists love me because I referred to them. <laughs> the uh, transit ischemic my wife has very painful ew that's awful uh, Danielle thinks you guys are funny back to TIA uh, same thing as a stroke resolves within 24 hours if I have copper smelling gas stop eating the eggs what's with you people their little twitter symbol is an egg that's how appropriate <laughs> more, more sulfur. oh I'm sorry that's sulfur, sulfur. what does copper smell What's copper smell like? Did you mean sulfur? Quit what does eating, copper quit smell like? Pennies. Did, stop eating pennies. Stop sitting on pennies. Uh, do you know Go in your pocket, <laughs> not other places. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, somebody said Dr. Brady. <laughs> he won't turn around. I'm sorry. I know you guys like seeing him, but he won't turn around. Dr. Brady, you and your... Don't you all just wish you worked here? <laughs> okay. And if there are any orthopedists out there, please let us know <laughs> before we get ourselves in any more trouble. I have a big nose. Um, I have so many different things I could talk about. I think I'll just keep talking about TIAs, <laughs> transit ischemic attacks. Um, so there's a blood clot in part of the blood supply to a part of the brain causing a stroke symptom. A stroke symptom can be a loss of some kind of neurologic function. It can be uh, a paralysis or a weakness of a side of the body. It can be difficulty with speech. It can be difficulty um, understanding language. Uh, there's actually a part of the brain called uh, Broca's area where people will lose uh, the ability to understand language or to speak, and, and it can even happen with music. Um, Broca's A Musica, as is written in that wonderful book, uh, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, 
by, what's his name? What? The guy who wrote, oh, the neurologist. I think he just died recently. I'm sorry, I can't come up with it. And uh, yeah, this person had a stroke and all they lost was the ability to play music. A great musician, they never could play music again. So a loss of some kind of ability. Um, it can be balance, you know, if it's in the cerebellum. Uh, it can be blindness in one field of vision, not one eye though, one field of vision, meaning left or right of both eyes, of uh, the visual field. So the, um, if a person has a, a TIA, you know, you get an MRI or a CAT scan and it doesn't show any permanent damage, then we recommend uh, at least being on a baby aspirin because it, it was most likely ischemic, again, if the MRI or the CT shows no bleeding. Uh, you don't want to put something on aspirin if they're bleeding. That's the problem with stroke. Uh, people think that they need to be treating stroke with aspirin like they do heart attacks. No, because one in five strokes is a bleed, and if you give them aspirin, it makes it worse. So that's why we don't automatically recommend aspirin for strokes, even though four out of five would be the similar process to a heart attack, a blood clot stuck in a blood vessel. So uh, now people who actually have a stroke will go ahead and treat them, with uh, a little bit stronger antiplatelet agent than just aspirin, something like Plavix or um, Agronox, which essentially the same thing. Okay, so I'm sorry, while I was talking about that whole thing and, and admiring all the hearts, I, I was not reading all of those wonderful comments and questions that I could be helping you guys with. Uh, so I could continue on with the chronic migraine issue, chronic migraine being a, a migraine that just continues on and on. Actually, chronic would be one that's intermittent. Status migranosis would be one that goes on and on, and that would be actually an unending migraine, status migranosis. That's a horrible experience, and generally I have a neurologist treat a chronic migraine being a migraine that comes and goes, but quite often. Okay, they have their own conversation going on here. I, I, <laughs> I, I have not kept up. I doubt that this one will get posted. Um, mainly because of that orthopedic comment I made much earlier. Can we talk about ADEM and anti-NMDA? ADEM, ADEM, A-D-E-M, quick. ADEM, 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 demyelinating, acute demyelinating encephalomyelopathy. Yes, thank you. Uh, ADEM, I don't know what the anti-NMDA is though, but ADEM is... Um, Oh, in some ways, kind of like multiple sclerosis. Um, it is a, a disease of damage to nerve fibers as they, I guess it can be in the brain too, anywhere in the central nervous system, either the brain or the spinal cord. I, I have only seen a case that was in the spinal cord. And what happened was the patient had an acute uh, onset of paralysis of the lower extremities that never resolved. And... Uh, what it came from is kind of unclear. It's thought that it may have been a viral infection. Uh, in the case I'm talking about, uh, it's also thought that it may have been due to ischemia when the patient had extremely low blood pressure because of acute Addisonian crisis, which was pretty much a shutdown of the adrenal glands. And uh, Migraine on the eighth day. That would be status migranosis. That should be looked at and, and probably seen by... Uh, by a neurologist. Hi, do you need something? I'm dropping this. Oh, that's for him. Okay. Yeah. Am I in a dark room? No, we don't have a dark room here. In fact, we don't deliver, uh, deliver. We don't deliver, nor do we uh, develop. We don't develop films here. Um, I'm in a room with a light. Uh, I guess you might say it's kind of dark because I keep the light off because I like the natural light coming in from behind. Um, just my own preference. Does IBS cause sharp pain in the rectum? Can. Absolutely can. But so can something called proctalgia fugax that occurs in people who don't have IBS. They just occasionally get a sharp pain and then it goes away and that's about all there is to it. I, I think I've read some uh, association with people who have, um, oh, what was it? Uh, encopresis. Uh, that's a topic that we did a show on. Actually, that was one of my favorite shows in the last couple of months on Medically Speaking Radio. Uh, you can find the podcast for it on iTunes. And if you're going there, please rate it. Um, and by the way, speaking of oh, nothing I should be alarmed about. Cancer doesn't cause sharp pain. Not usually. Uh, foreign objects can cause sharp pain in the rectum. Um, and anybody who's watched 
enough of these would know that 